I have no idea what the freakity frack KZN was thinking nominating Zulim Kize to be the next uh, president to face the buffalo. Now, Zulim Kize um, has a scandal that was associated with him, the Digital Vibes um, contract. For me, I don't have a problem with that part. I have a problem with them shooting the whistleblower. What the hell is the point of shooting the damn woman multiple times when she's already spilled the beans? We already know you had them inflate the prizes. You know, we, we already know that. So why kill her? You know, just imagine mom drops you off school and the next sound you hear bullets being blasted at, at, at her car. Like, it's just, nah. And another thing, um, it is it just shows that, you know, the stereotypes that Zulu people just do things their way, the other way. Like, you come up with this random man where nobody else outside Kezirin is nominating him. So it's, it's like, why? We already, as Amma Zulu, have it tough because people are still angry about Shaka Zulu. And we don't blame them. Yeah, Shaka Zulu did some unforgivable forgivable things. You know, he was a Zulu. <laughs> yeah, so, but like, I don't understand. Is it because Ngosa Zanetamini Zuma is Jacob Zuma's ex? Because they're divorced. I mean, if we're going to look at ex-wives, I mean, how is it that Ramaphosa's wife died so conveniently for him to just marry a Motsepe? The woman just died. Like that, like that's something fishy. I don't know whether it's because I watch Investigation Discovery, but my thing is the spouse is always the first suspect. And there's history of him being uh, being abusive towards her. And uh, I think Comrade Malema spoke to that. And remember, these comrades are friends. They know everything. But now when they're in parliament, they act like they're fighting. So that Rona, we, we fight amongst each other. It's crazy. You got... People who hate other people because of the political affiliations. But these guys, they hug each other. They go out to clubs. You know, they fight for, for attention in parliament. But once the cameras are shut, these people are buddy-buddy. So don't get yourself in trouble hating people that are cursing on social media, having your BP rising up, wasting your data, wasting your time, saying, oh, I'm advocating for this and that because... These people are just lying to us. It's like that Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone, the rapist, uh, that, that fight. It's fake. So I just don't see Mkiza winning it. And his son actually went to Casa High. So you cannot tell me that Mkiza was rich uh, before getting that ministerial post. He wasn't. Otherwise, the son, okay, maybe the son wasn't so smart. Maybe uh, the son couldn't... Uh, you know, it was not didn't have the right uh, cognitive senses or the right attention span. But other than that, the man got rich to power. It's the same goes for Tim Banjilo. Tim Banjilo was elected as the mayor of Peter Marisbeck simply because he was famous. Yes, he's an ANC person, and I think he was involved in Ubu Lame. You know, so you know how ANC people are. You're like, we fought for you, fought for you. You owe us this, you owe us this job, you owe us that, that, and that. Right? That's how they do things. But like, I'm just saying, like, um, you know, we can't do that. Mkiza, yes, we know you've been around. I'm not sure if you got arrested or whatever it is that you did that gets you the struggle credentials, but it's just damn. I would have rather they even put uh, Jacob Zuma's son because at least he's married to a white woman, so all the white people will be comfortable in voting for him. He's like another my money. You know, he, white people will be like, hey, hey, he's screwing one of us. Let's vote for him. You know, colored people also vote for him because now they've got colored, colored, you know, kids. And he'll also appeal to black people because black women are crazy about his dad. They're even more crazy about him. The only trouble he'll have is the Indian folks. But now he can always say, but I helped the but I helped the Guptas. I helped the Guptas. I helped the Guptas. You know, but that's the challenge. But I just say, Kezirin, it was down for you to elect him, Kize. And I don't know, sometimes you want to question the cognitive senses of the voters, but hey, they've expressed their freedom. And the funny thing about it is that uh, Didi Mabuza seems to not be featured anyway.
<laughs> Where is DD? I mean, I don't, I know he's dodging and like he's been in accident like crazy. So maybe he's scared to show his face. But I think that man would be a better president than the buffalo. And the thing with 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 Ramaphosa that irritates me. You know, we get paid today, twenty fifth. You look at the tax you freaking pay, and you know the exemptions we used to get. They've been reduced almost to nothing. Take away the medical deduction, uh, make it into some credit, section six credit. Like, why? Firstly, when Ramaphosa got those donations, that man should have paid a donation tax. Or the donors could have paid a, dona a donation tax. And since they didn't pay, the onus is now on him. He didn't pay a cent towards the donation tax. But you and I, if we are donating and we're past the 100,000 uh, deduction mark uh, and it's not for people who are depending on us, we got charged, got to pay the 20%. And with the Pala Pala thing, sure, he's got, um, you know, they, there's laws about foreign for having foreign currency. They say he broke the law. But my thing is... Uh, Nobody knew about this money, which of course means he wasn't taxed. So we're talking about maybe 60 million rand that he got and it wasn't taxed. Whereas you would get taxed on every freaking thing. You got to move. You get taxed on whatever they pay you. And like I said, they keep decreasing the the deductions. Now, the other candidate uh, whose name I picked up uh, was uh, Mamu Lindi Wesesulu. Um, unfortunately, Lindi, you are beautiful. Uh, so a lot of men are going to hate you because maybe you didn't, you know, let them see like keke. Uh, you're a beautiful, intelligent woman. Um, everybody's just going to assume you're there because of your father. That's something that I think the children of celebrities or children of uh, human rights activists, they they really uh, struggle with because you have to find yourself, um, you know, and at the same time acknowledge that it does give you preference. Being uh, Baba Walter Sisulu's child, it gives you preference, right? But it's not entirely who you are. And I think <laughs> the funny thing about Ramaphosa is he, he, he plans, you know, let's say Michael Jackson's song, you know, Ramaphosa is a smooth criminal. Man, Ramaphosa moved that woman to Department of Tourism. You know, in school, when you take the tourism subject, it's shorthand for saying, you're going to have a tough life. You're not going to amount too much. You know, uh, it does happen that some of the kids are able to, to do be successful, but it's like the default. You know, it's like, oh, your marks were bad. Go to tourism department. That's what Ramaphosa did to Lindy. It's like, Girl, you, 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 you talking. Because remember on the last elective conference, she was vying to be deputy president. Um, you know, so I think Ramaphosa like, this chiquita is going to cause me trouble. Let me send them to the, to the club where the people got the lowest marks. Go to tourism. Get rid of her. You know, if, 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 if you, there's something important, you know, you distract her. And say like some animals, some lions have gotten loose. We're having a lot of uh, lions uh, getting loose, you know. You know, not as as common as pit pit bulls, but yeah, if you wanna, Lindy, you can't come to the meeting because the lion has escaped. You have to make sure they recapture the lion before the lion, a uh, Simba, it goes and causes harm. Yeah, the most. The other people are uh, Bo Pulemabe. Pulemabe, I love that guy. Pulemabe said ANC must get less than fifty percent. That's a man who acknowledges that the party he is in ain't shit because what what person who believes in a party is going to be like you know ideally we should get less than 50 percent now straight away you know right i don't know if uh politicians work like companies you know in companies you do have controlling interest you do have an associate you do have a joint venture and it just depends on how much ownership you have so if he says nc must be less than 50 percent that means we are no longer a subsidiary of of nc and the other parties may also join and then because have the controlling interest and i hate this thing about nc nc when we have to bail up Bail out these SOEs, your SAAs, your, your Denels, your Transnet. Taxpayers' money is used, right? But when they decide to sell it, it's a it's it's a Lutuli house decision. The man, Ramaphosa, sold Denel to his son. <laughs> I promise you, if that was Jacob Zuma who gave, who sold the SOE to his son or his relative, 
Remember how? Remember that Zulu, that Zuma, Kulubusa uh, guy, the guy that it looked like he is Big Max like ten times a day, big ass guy, looks like a freaking hippo. Um, there was a big deal about him because he got tenders. And let me tell you, rich people don't need tenders. Rich people own commodities. They own the sugar fields. They own the mines, Petrus Mosebi. They have the fishing rights. They have the exploration right. I mean, it doesn't it suck? Uh, I think it was last year, diamonds were discovered in Newcastle. And straight away, the people who came in a scramble for Africa said, it's our diamond. We're taking, we're taking. You damn South Africans were so stupid. You didn't want the commodities. You know, your, your, your constitution allows us to take this diamond. Like, it's ridiculous. Why is it that South African commodities are not owned by South Africans? Like, what the frickity frack? And that's why we're going to have issues because the government only takes money from taxes. So your entities pay 28% and their double tax agreements, which in, which sometimes say, hey, you can't tax this person here. Yeah, this kind of income is exempted. So our government essentially only collects the tax and it's not enough. We've got 60 million people who are registered and we've got tons, millions more who are unregistered. Every damn single day I step out of the house, I see a foreigner. Every day without fail. You know, and, and you ask yourself, do these people have the rights to be here? You know, how, how did they, were they able to set up businesses? You know, does, does, does the whole rent exchange rate benefit them? Because... One of the things we say about uh, foreign guys is that when they send stuff home and they use the, the rent, it, it gets more. And remember, non, non-South African citizens uh, can also get away with paying that. And let's hope now, after the Zimbabwean guy exposed the free stage uh, woman, and let me just say, I've got news on my phone. I've got videos of me doing all kinds of shit. And if somebody were to leak that, I would be mortified. You know, but at the same time, I would own it, right? You know how you got to say, oh, but how can it get leaked? I trusted you. Uh, cry and say, I can't believe it. They, they're also my, they also me touching myself and, you know, oh, baby, I would. Right? Then the next week you start, and you start to say, I've learned a lot from this. And I'm going to be, uh, I'm not going to do it again. I'm always going to respect my body. And then the next time you get a model, the modeling contract, you know, do, do Kim. I'm going to say, if you're going to leak my stuff, leak everything so that they can see the kind of package I'm carrying. What's the use of using my face and my breast and you don't see the cake? Because I got a, I got a tasty cake. <laughs> you know what we call amalebe, you know, pussy cakes and I got that shit. So I'm hoping uh, since the free state issue happened with that lady, she's an important lady in parliament, you start to see the trouble we have. You know, Nigerians are scammers. Nigerians scam so much that every damn comedy has got a sketch about a scam done by a Nigerian. Every damn comedy you can think of something about a Nigerian scam. You know, um, so yeah, those are the, I digress, the, the conference is coming, it's going to be December next week, uh, you know, we, the conference is coming in like 16 days from next week, um, they, they, I, I think they've already started killing each other, uh, but yeah, <laughs> let's hope they won't kill each other as much as they did last year, yeah, and, and like for me, I've got actually a video that says Ramaphosa is going to win, um, I dreamt of that, um, yeah, he's going to win, I didn't see the, the other candidates, but when I saw it, it was, there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, right, so the other guy is Paul Mashatile. Ah, Paul is so ugly. Damn. I can't imagine his wife kissing him with the lights on. Just cannot. You know, maybe he's got a funny character because he looks like he can play Papa Spinach. Uh, yeah, but he, he's ugly shame. So people feel sorry for him. You're like, oh, shame. You look like this. You, you've got to sit like this. Oh, you can have this position. You can have that position, you know. And, and I think with Ramaphosa as well, Ramaphosa has a face that only a, a mother could love. You know, and I remember on his birthday, people were like, oh, he's made in the image of God. And I was like, your God looks like Ramaphosa? damn, your God is something else. My God doesn't look like that. 
And even his actions, that man acts like the devil. It's like he feeds on blood, right? So, yeah, Paul Mashatile, ah, he has a chance because they're going to, oh, sorry, you look like this. Oh, my God, you're down skin. Ah, and, of course, we've got Ronald Lamola. <laughs> Ronald who's, Lamola was also running and for me as a black person as a person who sees that black people are more susceptible to crimes especially economic crimes I just feel like the person who is the minister of correctional services that's the mother freaking most important damn job it's the most important one because you've got black people who are impoverished and they get exposed to crime. Once you get exposed to crime, uh, depending on what you do, you may get a criminal record. Getting a criminal record now means that you cannot work in some places legally. So what? You're forced to do the crimes. And if we had a, a, a minister in the correctional services who understands how the cycle of criminal, you know, activities uh, perpetuates they'll they'll come up with plans i mean you've got people who have got criminal records that are still affecting them and it's crimes they they did like 20 years ago 15 years ago well, how do you expect that person to 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 be able to work like let's have a period and and how then do you do you ensure that the people in jail are actually rehabilitated because that's where it starts in my view the most important job for black people and especially in America because the numbers there as well show that you know the, the black population uh, their crime links is dispo dis disproportionate to their population sorry it's, it's like half past 12 a.m where I'm at Black Friday shopping got me all whatever a lot of fancy stuff though yeah so for me i feel like the correctional services for black men is the most important department they should be active all the mother freaking time you know how politicians act when it's voting time the department of correctional services should be doing that day in day out because that's what we need you know so for me i feel like maybe and the thing about these it's like it's such a dick fest you know, Gosas and Lamini got some votes and the other women got some votes and I saw Numvula Makonyana's name. But nobody's really going out in public and saying, hey, I have not seen a social media page that says Numvula Makonyana for anything. It's a dick fest. It really is. And it worries me because there's some unions as well. At NUM, when I look at the people who are on Facebook, who people are saying they've got a youth uh, conference happening, it's mostly men. Literally, I have not seen a woman being advertised for a certain post in the structure. And, like, it's, it's a dick fest, you know. And it's, it's disappointing because uh, the women are the larger, you know, number of population. I believe as well that uh, women in the workplace are subjected to all sort of things that men will not really be subjected to. Uh, and it would be nice for us to see women in the forefront. But yeah, as far as the, the candidates of the ANC elections, uh, that, that's all I've got for now. And But I'm definitely sure that Nkiza is not going to win this thing. He's not. Um, they, they We just don't have that kind of money. Maybe Ramaphosa was keeping that para para money to bribe. I don't see Nkiza having that much money. And I believe the KZN people just, you know, you wasted, wasted your energy. You're wasting your time. You know, it's fine. <laughs>